Remember when the Cleveland Browns drafted a 28-year-old rookie quarterback? Growing up, I always found Brandon Whedon's football career so interesting, and being a decade since Whedon led the Oklahoma State Cowboys to the Fiesta Bowl, and the number three ranking, I thought it would be a great time to look back at what happened to Brandon Whedon. In the Who Is series, we go through the backstories of up-and-coming collegiate and pro athletes. If there's a player you want to see in future episodes, make sure to let me know in the comments section below. Brandon Kyle Whedon was born on October 14, 1983, and grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma. He was a big-bodied, small-town boy who would go on to be a top athlete in multiple sports. Whedon was the oldest of three boys and grew up playing baseball, fishing, riding dirt bikes, and racing BMX bikes. Whedon's true love was actually baseball rather than football. Until Whedon was 13, he was always the youngest on his baseball teams because he was better than most of the kids his age and played year-round. At age 13, he played for a team called the Oklahoma Sooners, a travel baseball team that played teams across the country, and finished the year 113-8. Whedon attended Edmond Santa Fe High School, where as a freshman he was 5'7 and weighed 130 pounds and never really considered playing football. As a sophomore, he grew to be 6 feet tall, but only played basketball and baseball. As a junior, Whedon decided to go out for the football team after growing to be 6'3". He shared time with another quarterback, and the Wolves were terrible according to Cleveland.com, losing all but two games. The head coach was fired, and the kid he shared time with would transfer to another school. Expectations weren't high for the Wolves, but with a brand new head coach and Whedon as the starting quarterback, they would finish the year 8-2 and, and reach the state semifinals his senior year. He was named the team MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Whedon finished second in the state of Oklahoma with passing yards with 2,863 and 25 total touchdowns. Whedon would also be named All-State in football as well as baseball. Growing up, Whedon had posters of New York Yankees, Derek Cheater, and Alex Rodriguez, so when he received a phone call from George Steinbrenner, the Yankees owner, while on his senior trip in Mexico, telling him he was drafted by the Bronx Bombers in the second round of the 2002 MLB draft, it was a dream come true. Originally, Whedon thought it was a prank being pulled by his friends and almost hung up the phone. The Yankees drafted Whedon as a pitcher, but his high school coach played him mostly as a shortstop and a closer his senior year. He finished the year going 5-1 with 9 saves and a 1.39 ERA, but only threw 36 innings that season. Scouts and his advisor became annoyed with Whedon's baseball coach as they wanted to see him pitch more as a starter to see how good he really was. Whedon's advisor wanted him to have more exposure as well. Brandon and his family never complained to his coach, though. With his high school coach telling Cleveland.com, we visited about it, and he said, Coach Cobble, our goal is to win a state championship, not see how high I can get drafted. Whedon was drafted in the same round as Joey Votto and Brian McCann, and nine picks before Curtis Granderson. At the same time, Whedon had a baseball scholarship from Oklahoma State, but the $565,000 signing bonus was enough for him to go right to the minor leagues. When he left home at 18 for the Yankees Rookie League in Tampa, he had a plan. He did not want to be one of those guys who kicked around the minor leagues for 10 years. He gave himself a 5-year window. Whedon's baseball career did not go as planned as he would go 19-26 and with a 5.02 ERA in 5 seasons. Despite having a 90 mile an hour fastball, he never advanced past high class A, 3 notches below the major leagues. The Yankees traded him to the Los Angeles Dodgers in a deal for ace Kevin Brown. The Dodgers eventually sent him to the Kansas City Royals, where he finished his career with the High Desert Mavericks of the California League and a torn labrum and tendonitis in his thrown shoulder. Whedon struggled having two to three poor starts in a row, never really having struggled with sports before. It taught him how to learn to deal with difficulty and to gather yourself and move on. Former Major Leaguer Steve Renko, who was one of Whedon's pitching coaches, told Cleveland.com, Tough kid. I thought he got nervous a little bit. But he had a good arm, decent breaking ball, and struggled with command a little bit. But he wasn't afraid. He'd go out there and give you everything he's got. Whedon did have a backup plan though, college football, but the timing seemed to be off. His girlfriend at the time, and future wife Melanie, was just graduating college at the time, and Whedon would be a 23-year-old freshman. He was able to sell her on the idea that Oklahoma State gave him a risk-free shot as a walk-on. Having the opportunity to play football smoothed out the, his transition between sports, saying, It was tough. I'd played baseball since I was three years old, and I never missed a season. That was kind of hard until I got to Oklahoma State and realized this is what I really wanted to do. I want to quickly share a story I came across researching Whedon's backstory. Former Oklahoma State offensive tackle Andrew Mitchell still remembers his first visit to the Stillwater campus. 
The junior college transfer swung by football practice, but it wasn't the varsity team that caught his attention. It was some kid on the scout team in a rival Oklahoma Sooners jersey. I couldn't help but notice out of the corner of my eye this guy just throwing darts, he said. When Mitchell asked who the quarterback was, the recruiting coach passed Whedon off as some player who might eventually work himself from walk-on to backup. One of the scout team receivers Whedon was throwing to that day was future fellow first-rounder Justin Blackman. During a Thursday night game in November of 2009, number 12 Oklahoma State trailed Colorado, and Oklahoma State's starting quarterback had gotten hurt the week before, and the backup quarterback was ineffective during the first half. So the Cowboys turned to third-string quarterback Brandon Whedon, and Whedon threw for 168 yards and two touchdowns and guided Oklahoma State to an 11-point comeback victory. He was confident, composed, and commanded the huddle. After his performance, he would finally earn a football scholarship. He would play in three games that season and took over the starting job the following year. During week two of the 2010 season, Whedon injured his thumb, which resulted in him throwing for two interceptions and having two fumbles in the win over Troy. After the performance, Whedon said, Hurt thumb, no thumb, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I don't have a thumb. You've got to take the snaps. The following week, he bounced back having a six-touchdown performance against Tulsa. Oklahoma State finished the 2010 season going 11-2 and beat Arizona 36-10 in the Alamo Bowl. Whedon finished the year throwing for 4,277 yards, 34 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, and was recognized as first-team All-Big 12 quarterback. During his senior year, Whedon led the Cowboys to an 11-1 record in the number 3 ranking in the BCS standings, which resulted in a berth in the Fiesta Bowl. During the bowl game, Whedon had three touchdown passes and rushed for another in a 41-38 overtime win over Stanford. He finished the season throwing for 4,727 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. He broke school records in total attempts, completions, yardage, and touchdowns. Brandon Whedon was viewed as a top prospect in the 2012 NFL Draft, but there were some concerns. Many NFL draft analysts described Whedon as a slow-footed and questioned his ability to escape a pass rush. They wondered whether he was going to be able to grasp the footwork to transition from his college offense to the pros. There were also concerns when it came to his age, as he would be a 28-year-old rookie. There were also some positive things when it came to what Whedon brought to the table. He had completed 72% of his passes, made smart decisions, and showed keen timing and accuracy, and could fling a ball 70 yards. When he met with the Browns, the Browns sensed a maturity that only came with age and experience, so with the 22nd overall pick, the Cleveland Browns selected Brandon Whedon. Whedon spoke on being drafted saying, It was the best phone call of my life. I wish I could play it back and hear exactly what they said and what I said. It's kind of like your wedding day. You remember it, but you don't remember it, you know? At the time, the Browns organization was not in a good place. They had used three starting quarterbacks in the two years leading up to Whedon being drafted between Colt McCoy, Jake DeLome, and Seneca Wallace who combined for a 9-23 record between 2010 and 2011. Whedon would win the starting job out of camp and threw four interceptions in his debut. He got his first win as a pro in Week 6, throwing for 231 yards and two touchdowns against Cincinnati, and led the Cleveland Browns to a 5-11 record. He threw for 3,385 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 17 interceptions. In Week 2 of the following year, Whedon hurt his thumb and missed time. Brian Hoyer would take over the starting job and not relinquish the job until he got hurt in Week 5. Whedon would then take the job back before being replaced by Jason Campbell in Week 8. On March 12, 2014, the Cleveland Browns released Brandon Whedon, and the Cowboys signed him less than a week later. Whedon would be Tony Romo's backup for the 2014 and 2015 season. Whedon started three games in 2015, throwing for over 660 yards and one touchdown, with two interceptions, but lost all three games. The Cowboys would release Whedon towards the end of the 2015 season, and he would be signed by the Houston Texans. In September of 2017, Whedon was released by the Texans, but signed with the Tennessee Titans that October and was only active for one game. In 2018, Whedon would sign with the Texans again, but has been out of the league since. It looks like Brand Whedon is now dipping his toe in the water when it comes to broadcasting. He is participating in guest spots on the radio and television. During the 2019 season, he was invited to a behind-the-scenes experience for a Monday Night Football broadcast and did the same thing for Fox for a college football game. In early 2020, he was selected to go to the NFL's broadcasting boot camp in Ohio, which is a highly valuable opportunity. Unfortunately, the event was canceled due to COVID-19. In September, he provided color commentary for the Oklahoma State-Missouri State game on ESPN+, and last I found, he announced the Kansas State-Southern Illinois game on ESPN+, as well. So why did Brandon Whedon fail in the NFL? 
A lot of people believe it was due to his age, his lack of pocket presence, poor footwork and slow decision making, his lack of accuracy, and being in a bad situation and trying too hard to make things work. Although he didn't work out in the NFL, Brandon Whedon will always be viewed as an Oklahoma State great and one of the most interesting college football stories during the late BCS era. But what do you think? Is Brandon Whedon an Oklahoma State legend? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.